Hi everybody, Frank Lipsky with FlippedFireTraining.com. In this video, I'm going to review and demonstrate one of my favorite iPad applications. The application is called Explain Everything. And what Explain Everything does is it allows you to screencast through your iPad and create annotated and narrated videos from previously made PowerPoint and keynote presentations. You can also annotate groups of photos that you may have taken that are on your iPad or on actually we'll get into uh, you can access cloud storage also to get these applications or these documents into the application but you can do photos you can do any PDF that you have access to as well as keynote and PowerPoint presentation so uh, the application is very valuable in our course design I know a lot of other instructors outside of the fire industry that are doing flip fire training and video based training are using apps like Explain Everything. And uh, personally, I can say I've used this application for over a year now, and the developer, Morris Cook, is very open to suggestions from the community that's using the application, very quick to respond to questions. I really don't have anything bad to say about them. They've done a great job. Uh, the app right now is $2.99 in the App Store, so definitely very cost effective, and I can uh, only highly recommend it. It's been really good. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the demonstration. So again, like I said here, you can see Explain Everything is the name of the application. Okay, so we'll get right into the application. You can start, you see it's in the bottom right hand corner of my screen there, explain everything. I click on that, it opens the application. Just like any of the other keynote or pages of the iPad apps, it has this area where it saves my current documents. So these are three that I was already working on. Um, I'll go ahead and create a new document to show you how that works. So when I click on new project, I have a few options, blank project, as well as I can import from any of these other locations. Uh, obviously blank starts from scratch with the first slide import from photos is nice because I can import multiple photos at one time if I import 25 photos it's going to create 25 separate slides one with each photo so that's a nice feature in this case I'm going to import from Dropbox I already have Dropbox connected so it goes directly to my Dropbox account I click on flip fire training there in my Dropbox and you see I have explain everything demo so I click on this PDF it'll download it from Dropbox to my iPad and then it asks me if this is the one I want to use I click choose and it will render the slides it'll basically take the photos or the slides in the PDF here and it'll create a pre-done slideshow if I click on this top icon actually the second icon down it's my slide sorter within the slide sorter I can move slides around I just grab them with my finger and move them. I can hold my finger down on a slide and I have the option to delete it or to duplicate it. So if I hit the 2x you can see it created another slide there for me. So I can duplicate the slides that way. And then to delete I just click hold down and click the X. And you can see now that slide's gone. I can scroll through my slides this way with the arrow at the bottom. Okay, we'll start with our first slide. If I want to create a blank slide, let's, let's put one towards the end here. We click this top left hand button and it creates a blank slide. So now you can see when I open my sorter, I have my blank slide there at the bottom. Okay, now we'll, we'll first talk about the tools. Uh, at the top left here, I have the pen tool. If you hold your finger down on any of the tools, you'll get the options drawer. And you can select a color, a pen thickness, you can set the transparency on, on the pen with the slider there. So we'll go ahead and set that and you can see I can draw directly on the screen. If I want to erase that I can hit the eraser button and I can erase part of it or all of it. Hold down on the eraser and I can select a larger or smaller size. Okay, just like that. Now if I want to delete an, an entire object and I don't want to spend the time erasing it, I can click on the X where the eraser was. Click the X, it highlights. Click my piece that I want to delete and you can see it starts shaking and I just hit delete so that's an option as well now the application does come with the with a laser tool if you would like to use the laser tool and you can select different ones so it is nice that you could select the arrow and then you can click and you could use that arrow if you were just pointing to things on the screen so nice little feature and there's several different options there I can also click the hand so 
I'll keep that and we'll use that a little bit later as we're moving through the application. Now I also have the option here to click on shapes and in the shapes I have colors. I can select the color of the shape as well as the line uh, on the outside of the shape. I can set the transparency and the fill color so if I want a shadow so I can set all those and I can go ahead and put that shape in move it around the screen so you have a lot of features that you can do alright let's click another one and we'll just make a square shape okay so maybe I made a square there and we'll make one more make a circle okay and we made a circle there that's darker by changing the transparency. And then one other thing, if I want to move these shapes around, there are layers associated with them. So what I do is hit this uh, two arrows, the button on the left with the two arrows going opposite directions. And I select, in this case I'll select the arrow and I can say bring it to the front. So it comes then in front of all those other shapes. Now remember, if you have a photo or a slide as the background of your page that's going to be the back layer so if you say send all the way to the back so you could lose your shape behind the slide so be cautious of that it's not a big deal if you lose it you just move it back around again or select the background and move it all the way to the back okay and those are our shapes if I want to put text in I have a lot of text options here but we'll just leave this where it is for now we'll select red we select there and we can type on the screen we can justify it left right or center and then we just hit the checkbox and now we have our text and we can then grab our text sometimes you have to click off of it and click back on but you can then grab your text and put it wherever you want on the page I tend to use the text tools quite a bit when I'm putting in numbers for fire trucks so I might take a square and make it red and then put 4024 so that I can label it. So if I'm doing a top-down view from say Google Earth and we're doing a critique about a fire I can put those unit shapes in so that people know where the trucks were. Okay the next option I'm gonna go ahead and let's um, create a new slide real quick and I'm gonna import a photo. Now one thing I want to show you real quick because I think it's important and I get a lot of questions about it is the Google Maps option. So I can go to Google Maps on the internet. This is just my web browser on my iPad. And from within here, once I find this the certain picture that I want to use, okay, so maybe I want to zoom up there and use just that piece of it. You can hold down your home button and your sleep wake button on your iPad. You just push them quickly together. And you'll see the screen flash. And if you have your sound on, you'll hear a camera sound. And what that did is took a screenshot of your screen and saved it to your photo roll. So now I can very easily go back to explain everything and I can click on my photos and I want to insert an image from my photo roll. I can also take it directly from the camera too so sometimes I'll, I'll do that as well if I have the camera out at the location but most times I take all the pictures and then I go back and create the PowerPoint or the keynote or, uh, and explain everything. So we'll take one from the photo roll, go to the camera roll and you'll see the photo I just took. And obviously I want to get rid of all that stuff at the top because I don't like having that in my image. So I just slide it up. And you can rearrange your size here and adjust it. Okay, and then you click Done. And it will bring your photo in. Sometimes you have to kind of rearrange it a little bit to get it just how you want it on the slide. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We'll leave it just like that. Now from here, we'll talk about recording our narration. And like I said, each slide within Explain Everything can be narrated separately. So if you're on slide 20 of a presentation and you mess up, it's not going to ruin your whole slideshow. Or if you need to put an extra slide in on some material that you missed, then you need to go back. You can do that and the narration will be associated just with that slide. So it's a great feature for using uh, to create lecture narratives. So here I may want to go ahead and just talk and I would be recording. So to do that, I hit the record button and Okay, when we access this building, we're going to notice that there's a hydrant at both of the entrances. We also have a hydrant in this rear parking lot, and we have a hydrant right over here in the middle of the grassy area off adjacent to the large parking lot. 
Okay, so that might be something that I talk about. Okay, now I did 18 seconds, you can see, of audio. I can keep that, or I can hit the rewind or the left arrow button, and I can record over it. Or I can hit record again and continue on. So now, maybe I'll select a different text tool and hit record. Okay, and when we access this building from the front parking lot to the center of the building, we have a 150-foot approximate hose lay. If we come in from the back of the building to get all the way past the pod to the center, we're looking at 225 feet. And to access from this driveway and coming in this way around the hallway, we have 210 feet to get to that area. And if you wanted to, you could even show 210, 225, whatever they might be, or you can put labels in, however you might want to do that. We'll pause it. Okay, so you can see now I have 55 seconds of narration on that video. Now another feature might be that I want to go ahead and go to my next slide. Okay, so we'll come down here and we'll do, let's duplicate. I just want to show you something here. I can duplicate that slide. So now you can see I have two of them. And if I want to delete on this one, maybe I do want to just delete all that narration. I can do that. And now what the advantage is, is I can have that other stuff drawn, and then I can talk about the hose lays later on. So maybe now you can see I'm not recording, and maybe I want to use my black marker, and I want to talk about each section of the building. Maybe it's broken down into three, build three sections, so it's section one, two, and three, something like that. Okay, and you could also take your shapes and put a shape over there and make it sort of opaque so that they can still see through the shapes. Just depends on how detailed you want to go. So let's say I have all this ready to go. Now I'm ready to narrate. So I hit record. As you can see, the north side of the building, the northeast corner is section one. And then to the right of that, or east of it, we have section two. And to the south, we have section three and I stop my recording. Now what I was able to do there, I didn't have to waste time drawing or talking, I could have that ready to go and it was already on the screen when I when I went to that part of the recording. So depending on the type of lecture you're doing, you might do that different ways, either to save time or to really drive home the point of what area is included in your in your square here that you circle or that you outlined. So there's a lot of different features uh, that you can look at. Now another nice thing here is I can review each slide and listen to my audio. So we'll go back one slide and we'll listen to the audio from this narration. Okay, when we access this building, we're going to notice that there's a hydrant at both of the entrances. We also have a hydrant in this rear parking lot and we have a hydrant right over here in the middle of the grassy area off adjacent to the large parking lot. Okay, and when we access this building, Building from the front parking lot to the center of the building, we have a 150 foot approximate hose lay. If we come in from the back of the building. Okay, so I'll pause that. But you can see where I created that as two different slides, but when the audio rendered, it just automatically puts them one after the next. So it looks like just one long video. Now you may have heard a little glitch in there. That's only because this is a quick rendering. Once you actually make your final video, you won't have those any of those glitches or anything. So one other feature I want to show you here is when you're at the very beginning, if you hold down the play button, it will actually give you this yellow play button. And if you press that, it plays the whole presentation from start to finish to let you see what it looks like. Uh, if you click just the regular play, like it is right here, it will just play the current slide that you're on. It'll play the audio there. Okay, one other thing I want to touch on here is if I click on the photo button, you can see that I have an option to import from web browser. And that's something that was added recently to the application. I'll click that and show you. It brings up a web browser and I can just type in any web address. Okay, so we'll go to flipfiretraining.com, and you can see it brings up the website, and I, what's really neat is on my iPad, I'm actually clicking on the iPad now, I can go and navigate the website just by clicking within my iPad application. And another nice thing is I can scroll through the website, so if I'm doing a demo, or maybe I'm just showing 
how to use a company website and where they need to go to do that. I can scroll through here. Now another nice thing, obviously, this is an annotation software, so I can annotate. I can scroll through the website. Maybe I'm scrolling through telling them how to get to this article, and then I can say, and when you come to this link right here, you'll want to go ahead and play that video, and it's a 10-minute video that will explain whatever. Okay, so you get the point. I can go through and actually scroll through. If I hit erase, whoops, I have to click off my pen tool and hit erase, it'll get rid of my annotations and I can scroll to another page. So, and that's all being recorded with live browsing of the web as well as my live audio. So a very cool feature and I'm sure there's a ton of ways that you guys can find to use that part of the application. So now in closing here, there's a few options down at the bottom of the screen on the right hand side. First, I have the option to export an image, so each slide can be exported in all these various formats. The next most important one for me is this, movies. I can export the movie, the finished product, to my photo roll or YouTube or email, Dropbox, and so on. Most times, I just put it in my photo roll, and then I'll go ahead and send that to YouTube at a later time. Uh, that way, I don't have to wait for it to be totally compressed for YouTube, but you can click directly on YouTube and upload directly from within the Explain Everything app uh, to YouTube. There is a process and I think it's been fixed in, in latter updates. I haven't had a problem lately but back when the app first came out there was a process where when it was going to YouTube it would save it first and then upload it to YouTube and if you ever ran out of battery or lost your internet connection or anything in the middle of that process there was a time that I did lose a movie uh, and I had to redo it and so I like to save it to my photo roll first that way I know I have a finished copy in my photo roll but again you should have it within the application and that was almost a year ago that the, that that was an issue it hasn't been an issue ever since so I'm sure that's something that was addressed by the developer and has been fixed um, again haven't had an issue lately so another nice feature is I can click on projects and I can save this as a project and send it to someone else so if I have another instructor who's collaborating with me I send them the project they see my raw file so they can actually go in and add more slides they can narrate slides that I've already put in uh, so again collaboration is really nice in this application this third button here is the auto save you can see that it auto saves the project as you're working on it and then you can also save it as a finished project at the end with a certain name and then the last button here is my home button I'm not going to save this one but it brings me back to the home button and that's where my folders are with all my different auto saved applications or the ones that I named and I can open them up and I could work on any of those applications at any time okay so that concludes the demo and uh, preview of explain everything okay I hope you enjoyed the uh, the demonstration there and as always please check out our website www.flippedfiretraining.com you can also check us out on Facebook Facebook address is facebook.com slash flipped fire training and you can like us there if you would on Facebook we'd appreciate that leave any comments that you have also again if you're using like I say in almost every video if you're using these applications in the flip classroom please comment on them let us know how you're using them especially if you're uh, in the fire service and you're using the applications we'd love to hear about how it's working for you so again thanks for watching have a great day